going to wait for Joseph anymore because he's not yet done. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, finish up what you're chewing. You and sit down here. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Hi. I hope everybody had a good sleep. I didn't. You did. <laughs> you didn't. Why didn't you? I you, huh? Yeah. Okay, it's January 4, the first day today, and it is, uh-oh, I cut the cheese. Okay, so today we're, we have a very nice gospel. Well, all, all the gospels are very nice, but today is, <laughs> is particularly interesting, um, and it, it tells us a very, very nice story. Okay, so let's let's listen up. Okay, let's listen. The gospel is it's written. From Luke. No, what? look. It says. Oh, John. John, Saint John. Okay, so John, John, was standing by his by, with two of his disciples. This is John the Baptist. Okay, not John the Evangelist. So it's a continuation of the story that we heard yesterday. So John was standing with his two disciples. And he watched Jesus walk by. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God. See, he pointed to Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now the two disciples who were with John the Baptist heard it. Heard what he said. And followed Jesus. So the two disciples of St. John the Baptist followed Jesus. When John pointed him out to them. Now, so you can imagine the scene where Jesus was walking away from the pack of uh, people that were with John the Baptist at the Jordan. And then there were these two men who were following at a distance, following, following, following. And Jesus must have sensed that they were following him. And so he turned to them and said, uh, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi which means teacher. Maybe they didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to ask, right? Because they were just following at a distance, hoping perhaps uh, that, that they would not get noticed. Maybe they were shy, okay? Because they didn't quite know how to approach Jesus because, because well, this is the Lamb of God. This is the Messiah. I suppose all of a sudden it dawned on them that this is the one that was being promised to us by the prophets, see? Uh, we are trailing behind him. We are right here. We are right here behind this very mysterious uh, man uh, who, who, according to our master, John the Baptist, is the Messiah. Could you, could you imagine that? Could you imagine a scene where you are following somebody that, that is supposed to be um, a great man, a great guy? Eh? Somebody you, you've been longing for, somebody you've been wanting to meet, somebody you've been uh, mesmerized by, somebody who's been promised to you. Could you, you just imagine having to follow a Hollywood star, for example, right? <laughs> if, you, if you happen to be walking uh, uh, around Hollywood Boulevard, okay? And, uh, and all of a sudden there was uh, this actor you see walking in the streets and you were walking behind him. See, I'd like to think, huh? You, you would be filled with excitement, right? About w walking behind this guy. Eh? Now, could you imagine the same thing? Our Lord is, is greater than uh, any Hollywood star. Eh? And here are these uh, two disciples, uh, uh, already, already all uh, uh, worked up by John the Baptist after he said, there, there is the Lamb of God. Go, go follow him. Eh? So these two disciples... <laughs> So and then our Lord all of a sudden takes notice of them and says, Hi, uh, what are you looking for? <laughs> and then startled at that attention Jesus gave them, they, asked, they, they, they couldn't quite make up what to ask him. They, they just said, uh, Rabbi, uh, where are you staying? <laughs> See, it, it's like, it's like a crazy question to ask, right? It's like, where are you staying? You mean you need my address? <laughs> right? Why do you ask where are you staying? So anyway, uh, 
And our Lord said to them, Well, come, come, and you will see. Come, and you will see. It was an invitation to follow Jesus. Just come. Just come, and you will see. Now, you might wonder, what did they see? What did they actually see? Because in another gospel passage, our Lord says, The birds of the air have nests, the foxes have dens, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So that means he had no home. That is why he could not give his address to these two disciples. <laughs> right? That's why he just said, well, um, just come and see. Because it was, he was not going home to any particular place. Because you know where his home is? Yeah, okay. Besides heaven. Oh, in Bethlehem was where he was born. Yeah. Nazareth was where he grew up. Yes. But where is the real home of Jesus? Us. Where does he want to dwell? Huh? Where? Us. Where's us. where? In us. In us. In our hearts. Right? In our hearts. There is where Jesus wants to really dwell. There is the real home. That Jesus wants to make. He wants to make his home in our hearts. And so when he said, when he said to the two disciples, come and see, his intention was instead of making the two disciples dwell with him, he was going to dwell in their hearts. The two disciples eventually had to make room in their hearts. For Jesus to dwell in. Okay? They had to eventually make room in their hearts to accommodate Jesus. To accommodate his teachings. To accommodate the faith that he wants to share with them. See? Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. Come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day. <laughs> they stayed with him that day. See, wonder where that was, right? Uh-oh, be careful there. Okay, it was about four in the afternoon. Could you imagine that? This disciple, St. John the Evangelist, remembers the time of day that they met him. So the two disciples were actually who? John the Evangelist himself, the youngest of the disciples, because he was the only one who writes about this experience. Would you imagine that? Out of all the four Gospels, eh? it was only St. John the Evangelist who writes about this experience of meeting Jesus for the first time in this way. So, while he is not naming himself in this story, the belief is that he was one of those two. Who was who first followed Jesus this way? He never names himself. Yes, he never names himself. He just calls himself the beloved disciple or etc. Right? Now, the other disciple who was with him was Saint Andrew. And who is Saint Andrew? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Saint Andrew is the brother of the first Pope, the brother of Simon, who was later called Peter. Right? So let's continue. It was four in the afternoon. It must have been a very, very special point, turning point in the life of St. John that he remembers even the time of the meeting. See? And that's, that's something that, that, that is a very, very uh, a concrete human experience even for ourselves. Right? When, when, when we encounter a very important experience in our lives, when we, when we go through a very important uh, you know, uh, um, uh, cataclysmic kind of experience, we normally remember all the circumstances related to it. Right? 
In the case of St. John, he remembers even the, the time of day. It was about 4 o'clock. Okay? And that is what happens when, when we encounter our Lord. When we encounter Jesus, we, we remember the details. about Not only about our conversion, but about everything else that relate to our relationship with God. With Him. Okay, so it was 4 in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. Now look, look at what happens when souls discover Jesus. Look at what happens when, like these two first disciples, look at what happens to them. The first, he first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Beautiful, right? What happens when we discover Jesus? What happens when we make Jesus dwell in our souls? One of the most uh, magnificent things that happens is we could not contain Jesus in our hearts. It is like we, we are bursting in excitement that we found Jesus. We found the treasure. And the, the, the normal consequence of that, the normal reaction of anybody who really uh, uh, found uh, the, the treasure of Christ is that he shares it with others. He shares it with others. Anybody who has found what is good, anybody who is in possession of something very rich and very nice, feels the compulsion to share that good with other people. Just look at yourselves, right? If you, if you, uh, if you get so excited about something that's so good about you, the normal tendency is you start talking about it. You start sharing that experience with other people, right? Now that is the same thing that happens when we possess Jesus, when Jesus dwells in our souls. The tendency is we break out and we, 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 we start talking about Jesus with other people with the excitement that only a soul filled with love for God will do. And if we are filled with that, excitement of possessing Jesus in our souls then we will start talking about him with others we will start bringing other people beginning with our own brothers and sisters into the fold of Jesus Christ okay now but you know as, as we have already said before we may have all that excitement in us but sometimes it is not easy for us to be talking to other people, right? And, 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 and actually talking to other people about Jesus Christ. But you know what? There's another way of talking. There's another way of communicating Jesus to others without opening our mouths. Emails. Oh, by email? <laughs> There's something better than email, Joe. And that is what Jesus said to the two disciples. Come and see. Come and see. <clears throat> that other way is by simply giving good example. Just by giving good example, you attract. We were talking about attracting yesterday, right? You attract people to Jesus Christ. Because you make Jesus Christ shine in your life. Because he is here inside of you. You made him dwell inside of you. Okay? It, he will now influence the way you live your life. Right? And by necessity, you cannot contain him there. He will shine forth. He will shine forth. And he will come out in the way you act, in the way you think, in the way you do things. See? It is Jesus in you that will be shining forth. And without even opening your mouth, 
without even saying a word, if you only live your lives according to the, the way Jesus would like you to live it, then you will become shining examples for others. For your other brothers and sisters, if they see that you are living your, your, your faith faithfully, if they see that you're doing your chores, if they see you're studying, if they see you're obeying, if they see that you are doing, if they see you're pious, if they see you're, you're praying, if they see that you're doing good things, they will get influence to do the same. Okay? A picture speaks a thousand words, right? Uh, uh, actions are stronger than words or words to that effect. Right? <laughs> so, uh, actions, example, picture, image, come, see, 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 look at what I do, look at where I live, experience me, experience my life. That is the power of good example. That Jesus, gee, Jesus started that way, right? He did not. He did not tell the two disciples, "Okay, listen to me. I'm going to tell you." Da, 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 da. No, Jesus just said, "Come and see." You want to follow me? Because John the Baptist pointed out, "That's the Lamb of God. Go follow him now." So here the two disciples following, and Jesus simply said. Come and see. So Jesus started his public life, started converting souls, started talking about the kingdom of heaven by just showing good example to these two disciples. That was his first attempt. That was his first strategy to attract people to God, to attract souls to himself. Good example. So do not belittle good example. Always try to show good example, not for the sake of show, right? Not for the sake of showing that we are goody-goody. No, that's not the point. The point is Jesus Christ shines through us. Let us not keep him bottled in. Let us let him shine. Let us let him come out. Because that is the authentic way to express our excitement for having to possess Jesus dwelling in our souls. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. 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 Oh, it doesn't want to stop. <laughs>